This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Conference tournaments are heating up across men's college basketball with a bunch of games on the docket for today. We're going to break those down from a betting perspective by talking to Aiden Cotter of FanDuel Research, getting his read on his favorite bets across FanDuel Sportsbook for today. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Aiden Cotter. Check him out on Twitter at Aiden Cotter FD and find his work over at FanDuel Research, where he is a writer for us. Aiden, it is a delight to have you on the show for today. How you doing? Hey, Jim. I'm doing good. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on. I always think of the first day with all the major conference tournaments in action as kind of the beginning of mm -hmm. March Madness. So yeah. it's, uh, it's an exciting time, and I'm excited to talk some games. Do you have a setup where you can put some games on, you know, while you're plugging away uh, on articles for today? Like, do you have a TV within like eyesight so you can kind of keep tabs on things? Yeah, we used to do like the multiple TVs, but yeah, YouTube TV has like the f yeah, four yeah. boxes now and it just makes things so much easier. All right. So you're going to be tuned in throughout the day. And I feel like that always makes the work day just kind of fly by a little bit faster when you can have stuff on throughout the day. Oh, absolutely. That's that's a big key for me with golf is that I can have it on during work and just kind of like, you know, half pay attention to it and like tune in more so towards the end. But uh, we are fully in the thick of things. We have got day games going on today, tomorrow, Friday. And then, of course, next week, Thursday, Friday, it is going to be a delightful stretch of weeks. Aiden will be back with us again next week too, breaking down some NCAA tournament games, getting his read on those. We want to get him on the show here today too, because it is a fun time to talk some men's college basketball. We'll break it all down with Aiden here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find us by searching for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find this show on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. I broke down my initial reactions to NFL free agency on yesterday's show. Tomorrow, Ryan Williams will be with us to break down uh, some more NFL free agency news as that trickles across. And then on Friday, more men's college basketball with Riley Thomas will be joining us to break down his thoughts on Friday's games in the conference tournaments. FanDuel's putting the ball in your court for the rest of the NBA season because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on the NBA with a wide range of bets, including quick bets, live same game parlays, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus in present and select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Over to fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Over to ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit at MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, Aiden, we'll break down some games with you here in just one second. But first, this is our first time talking to you here on the show. So kind of wanted to get to know you a bit more and get to know your college basketball betting process. What kind of steps do you take before you actually decide to place a wager on a game? Yeah, so college basketball is really interesting to sport to gamble on compared to some of the others, especially the professional sports. We're dealing with pretty small sample sizes. Even once the tournament starts, teams have really only played max 30 some games. And so trying to draw significant conclusions from that data is difficult, especially because we're talking about college teams. These, the vast majority of players aren't going to be playing professionally. We're talking about 18 to 22 year olds. 
And we're talking about coaches who have a lot more say than, say, NBA head coaches would. And so you're going to see players and rotations change a lot throughout the season. And so we can't just look at the broader data. We have to kind of narrow it down to season splits, too. Um, for me, I like to start by just checking out some of the models that are available out there just to get a insight to where lines are showing value, right? There are so many lines. There are so many models out there. Yeah. Um, NPOM is obviously the big one. But then you have sites like Bartorvik, um, our number fire model. So there's plenty of data out there. So I like to check that out and see, like, is there some sort of consensus? Hey, this line's too short. This line's too high. And go from there. Um, the other big thing this time of the year is I'm really looking at bracket projections and mm -hmm. trying to see what teams have stuff to play for still. Yeah. So realistically, there's already like 35 to 40 teams that are pretty locked in. And so that can impact how much teams are willing to push in these conference tournaments. And then also how much they're willing to scale back or kind of mail it in at this point in the season. Um, and then obviously we have like our player specific matchups, um, looking at shooting splits, looking at where teams are giving up a lot of points, um, just as you would for any other sport. Now, I want to go back to you discussed blending models. Uh, and I think that that's something we discuss a lot here on the show is like wisdom of the crowds, because one model is good. Three models is better. So when you're looking across these models, are you looking for a consensus? Are you trying to find like a blend of like, here we go, you know, if I blend 33% Bar -tor Torvik with 33% Ken Palm, et cetera, et cetera, trying to find it that way. What process do you go through in deciding how to weigh you know, the various models, or do you just want a consensus effectively? Yeah. So I'm typically looking for a consensus, mm -hmm. right? I want the main three I'm looking at are Ken Palm, Bart Torvik, and Haslam metrics. Yeah. Um, I want them all to be within a point or so yeah. of the side I'm trying to get on. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm also, these are three different models. They're weighting right. things a little bit differently. So I'm okay to stray from one or the other if I'm feeling a lean towards a certain game. And is that based on like eye test for you? Are you kind of using that as like, okay, my starting point is eye test. I think that we'll throw this out there for you as a little apple. I think Dayton should be favored by 15, you know, because you're a Dayton guy. So let's say I think Dayton should be favored by 15. Let me check the models as kind of like a check on my eye test or how does that process work for you? Yeah, so it's almost like an inverse, which yeah. I, I want to see where the model lines up with the actual lines okay. and then go back and actually look into the teams themselves. And that's yep. where I want to apply the eye test and okay. see where those numbers match up with how I am viewing these teams. Okay. I like that. I think that's the smart way to do things in general, leaning on other smart people, which smart people built those models leaning on that's pretty smart but then also factoring in because you're a sports fan you've watched these teams you've watched these games you know what you're talking about so i think that factoring in the eye test uh, on top of that is a good way to do things so excited to talk to you about these games after hearing all of that so let's dive in and take a look here at the various games tonight uh, over at FanDuel sportsbook opening round of the big 10 tournament is tonight just two games on tap across the big 10 but any bets sent out to you for the big 10 tonight aiden yeah the Big 10 has like their bottom four teams squaring off tonight. So I'm not in love with any of the lines, with any of the spreads here, but I am interested in the total for this Maryland Rutgers game. Okay. So this will be the third time they've played this season and they split the season series. Somehow the road team won both games. And then both games finished with exactly 109 point total. <laughs> tonight we have an over under set at 125 and a half. And when you look at these teams, they're both top 15 nationally in defensive efficiency. They were the second and third best scoring defenses in the Big Ten. Maryland plays at an absolute snail's pace, and Rutgers is not afraid to get up and down a little bit, but they're one of the least efficient teams in the country. Maryland is also not much better on offense, and they could be without their second leading scorer, Julian Reese. He missed their season finale. Haven't gotten an update um, just based on some Twitter searches this morning. Didn't look like he was on the plane to the Big Ten tournament, but that's something I want to wait and see, get an yeah. official word out on him. But even if he plays, I think I would be willing to play this game down to like 122. Yeah, 125 like and a half right now is the number for Maryland versus Rutgers at FanDuel Sportsbook. Under is minus 110, and like that's that's like peak college basketball or college sports in general is searching Twitter, trying to find information. Uh, it is 
my least favorite thing to do on a Saturday morning during college football season is like doing Twitter searches of these guys. You get like all like the weird fan accounts and stuff like that, too. But I understand the process for sure. So Rutgers versus Maryland under 125 and a half at minus 110. Aiden is liking that one for the opening night of the Big Ten. More of a fun night in the Big 12, Aiden. Uh, it's got some like legitimately fun teams playing the big uh the big 12 for tonight so what are you seeing there uh for the big 12 yeah so if you're like just getting into college basketball this time of the year big 12 is the cream of the crop right last year they had seven teams in the big dance they've now added four teams two of whom have pretty much already locked in their spot in the field um 12 of the 14 teams in the conference are top 100 on kempom and so even in these games featuring higher and lower seeded teams, you're going to see some tighter spreads and some closer games um, right off the bat. And when I was going through these lines, when they first came out yesterday, TCU opened at two and a half against Oklahoma. And that right away stuck out to me as something I wanted to get on. And it has now dropped, I believe to one and a half as of this morning, it's back out to three and a half now. Okay. <laughs> so I, I sounds like think... you're on the same side as some other people out there who are influencing this line. <laughs> I still think I can play that. Okay. Um, TCU and Oklahoma are both have pretty similar resumes. TCU is a little closer to the bubble than Oklahoma is, but they both probably should be in. Um, Oklahoma feels pretty comfortable that they're in. Um, they've already announced that one of their key players, same as Revaldo Soros, he's going to sit. He turned his ankle in the season finale. Um, he's been their leading scorer for the last five games, kind of been that X factor. He's an upperclassman transfer. And then they're also going to be out with going to be out a big man who scored 14 points the first time that they played. And in that first meeting, TCU won by nine, was at home. But the big thing that I like to look at is the turnover battle. TCU won that turnover battle 14 to seven, and that's kind of been their MO all season, right? The Horned Frogs love to get up. They love to push the pace. And they love to force turnovers and get easy buckets in transition. And that's been an area Oklahoma's kind of struggled in all year. They have one of the highest turnover rates in the Big 12, and not having one of their senior guards is not going to help that one bit. Um, and it helps TCU's best player, Manuel Miller, had his second highest scoring total of the season the first time these teams played. Um, like I said, I wrote down, I liked it at two and a half, and then I would be happy to take it up to four. And so okay. even at three and a half, I am willing to play that. Definitely more thin value now at minus three and a half. Uh, the minus three and a half is minus 115, which probably implies that given the way it's moved so far, there's a good chance it does get to four. And it sounds like to you, once it gets to four, that's the point where it becomes a stay away. Is that correct? Yeah, I think four okay. is about where I draw the line. Okay, so three and a half right now, minus 115 on TCU. Still potentially some value out there, but uh, be cautious because that line is very close to being efficient in Aiden's eyes. Any other big 12 bets you're eyeing for tonight? Yeah, BYU, UCF, and Texas, Kansas State, those are games I'm kind of trying to stay away from. Mm -hmm. um, but the Kansas-Cincinnati game is really interesting to me. So when you pull up this game at first glance, it's probably a little jarring. You're going to see Cincinnati as a favorite here. And that's because Kansas has announced that they're sitting their top two players, Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller. Um, Dickinson dislocated his shoulder in the season finale. McCuller's kind of been banged up all year. And so Bill Self just said, okay, this is Kansas. We're not playing for a seed. We're already in the tournament. Let's rest our best guys. Let's go into the actual tournament healthy. And that probably is going to help them next week. This week, I think it really, really has me leading Cincinnati. So they already played once this year, and McCuller and Dickinson were both healthy. And Kansas pulled out a five-point home win in a game where Cincinnati shot three of 18 from three. <laughs> And Cincinnati is not a good three-point shooting team, mm -hmm. but three of 18 is hard, hard, hard to do. I was excited to back Cincinnati when the bracket first dropped as sort of like a plus eight, plus seven and a half underdog <laughs> when Kansas had their guys healthy. Without those guys healthy, I think they could cruise here. And I kind of talked about it earlier, having these motivations in these conference tournament games. Without their two best players kind of already signaling that they're willing to turn it in and move on to next week. I think this is the type of game that could kind of get out of hand in the second half. And so I am definitely willing to lay the two and a half here. So you mentioned the Kansas sitting key players. Do you think it's a spot where they even be willing to, of the guys who are playing, scale back minutes on them in order to keep them fresh? Are we talking like a pretty extreme get Kansas ready for the tournament spot type here? Yeah, it's interesting because Kansas is their MO all year has been like they have this really nice five man lineup 
Mm -hmm. And then there's just not much off the bench and they haven't gotten much from the reserves. So I'm interested to see how self kind of extends his rotation. Yeah. But there's just not a lot to extend. Yeah. Right. And the guys outside of Dickinson and McCuller, they have a few um, guys that are worth mentioning, but I, it's going to be hard for them to overcome losing two high usage players like those. Okay, so that's where the eye test comes in, where you know the bench is pretty thin. The bench is not going to be able to duplicate what Kansas typically does. So Aiden is on Cincinnati minus two and a half. That is minus 110 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's shift focus now and talk about the ACC. Four games there as well out in Washington, D.C. Where are you seeing value in the ACC for tonight, Aiden? It's been of a bit of a down year for the ACC outside of the North Carolina teams. Um, I'm not really loving any of the lines here. I, th- if I had to pick two, I would be interested in the underdogs, Notre Dame and Boston College. I think they're six and a half and eight and a half, respectively. I think I could talk myself into that by the time the games start up. But where I'm really looking here are player props. Um, so starting in the Wake Forest Notre Dame game, we can look at Marcus Burton, who is Notre Dame's point guard, over 18 and a half points. So Burton, he's a freshman super shifty guard he's from my hometown of south bend indiana went to notre dame cool story but he has just been lighting it up over the last month since february 1st he's averaged 20 points per game he's posted a 33 percent usage rate which is like zach ed level usage he's taken over 16 shots a game um he went for 31 against wake on february 27th got to the line 11 times and it helps that Notre Dame is a slow pace team, but this is a pace up spot up against Wake Forest who likes to get up and down and push the pace a little bit. And so you're seeing like a mid 130s total, which is a bit higher than you normally would for Notre Dame. And so I think this is a nice spot for Burton to stay hot and for him to hit that over on points. So you mentioned Burton is a younger player. Um, have you seen progression for from him throughout the year that has kind of led you to think like, OK, now that we're in crunch time, they're going to lean even more heavily on. I don't know if you can, given the usage rate, but like. Is he going to be the focal point now that the games are really at the the most critical? Yeah, absolutely. When he started off the year, he was kind of hovering like that low 20% usage rate. You could tell as like a freshman coming yeah. in, they had a new head coach. He wasn't really trying to take over the locker room. But as the year went on, that talent just kind of overshined everything. Um, and he's really just taken on this huge scoring load for them. Okay, so Aiden is on Marcus Burton over 18 and a half points, minus 118. That is for the Notre Dame versus Wake Forest game. Bit of a lean towards Notre Dame plus six and a half, but um, not as firm as with the player prop on Marcus Burton. Any other ACC bets you're eyeing for today? Yeah, so I got another player prop in the Syracuse NC State game. So NC State played yesterday. They played against Louisville, barely pulled it out. They were without their leading scorer, DJ Horn, and he wasn't even in shoes, in basketball shoes and warmups, which leads me to believe he's not going to play today. And so I do want to wait and see what his official status is. But if he doesn't go, this is a great stop, spot for DJ Burns to go over 12 and a half points. So if you're not familiar with Burns, he I highly recommend turn, tuning in tonight on ESPN2 and checking him out. He is... I think Jay Billis earlier this year described him as a 275 pound ballerina. <laughs> He's this monster of a man, kind of got this Zach Randolph body, but just these super agile feet and just great with the ball. He's an elite isolation scorer. And he doesn't have a ton of stamina. He doesn't play uh-huh. big minutes all the time and he can struggle with foul trouble. But if you go through his game logs, you'll see in some of the bigger matchups, he really likes to turn it up. And when he's out on the court, they run everything through him, right? Kind of like what I was saying with Burton, where he has this high usage rate. In ACC play, Burns had a 30% usage rate. He only averaged 11.6 points per game. But in those bigger games, they kind of relied on him more when they needed to get a bucket in isolation and run their offense through him when Horn was struggling. And so if Horn is out, I love DJ Burns over 12 and a half. He went for 14 and 10 in two games against Q's this year. And I think he can stay hot again tonight in what could be his final collegiate game. I mean, if we get an incentive to watch a 275 pound Cinderella as well, while betting DJ Burns over 12 and a half points, minus 110, I think that that helps move the needle a bit too. That's again for the NC State versus Syracuse game. Burns over 12 and a half points. Keep an eye on, on the tabs of the NC State, NC State players to make sure uh, we'll get some more usage funneled towards Burns' direction. But 
12 and out the number right now for Burns in that game against Syracuse. Let's open up the board to you now, Aiden. Any other spots where you're seeing value for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook? Nothing super big stuck out. Um, mm-hmm. There is a pretty high spread out in the Mountain West. We have New Mexico taking on Air Force. And the Mountain West has had a really strong season overall. And New Mexico is kind of the last team out of the Mountain West teams that is in contention for a tournament spot. They really need to win a couple games in this conference tournament to get in. And I think this is a spot against Air Force where they can come out and really just put it on. So they beat Air Force by like 20 at Air Force earlier in the season. And then towards the end of the year, the thing that kind of got them, put them back on the bubble, is they dropped a home game to Air Force. I love backing teams coming off of those losses where they've, they're they familiar with Air Force. They've played them twice already this season. And we saw what they could do at Air Force the first game. And so getting them in this third matchup with a little bit of revenge on their mind and needing a win here and needing a big spread here, I can really get behind New Mexico minus 15 and a half. And then the other one that I'm really looking at is it might be the last game of the day is Utah and Arizona State. And this is another team in Utah that was kind of on the bubble all year and had some rough losses and just did not end the year super well. But with these conference tournaments, they are absolutely in contention for the automatic qualifier as the sixth seed. It would definitely be a stretch for them to win the Pac-12 tournament, but even winning a couple of games to get there would put them much closer up on the seed line and get them closer to the bubble. Um, Utah is a team that's rated well in the advanced metrics all year. Whereas Arizona State has, they haven't really shown the capability to beat good teams consistently, especially away from their home court. So on a neutral court, on a neutral environment, I'll take a Utah team that is a lot more experienced and has something to play for compared to this Arizona State team. And so five and a half is a pretty nice number for me right there. And I'm comfortable laying that as well. That is minus 120 on Utah, minus five and a half. The New Mexico line against Air Force, minus 15 and a half is minus 106. Now, you're talking about the incentive for them to win multiple games. And I think that could work two ways, where on the one hand, if they need to win more than just this game, they could say, we got a big lead. We can kind of scale back on guys. Other side, though, is style points do matter. And so I think that when you're looking at the New Mexico game specifically at 15 and a half, I think that when you, I mean, even before you like factor in any potential revenge factor, I think there is an incentive there to kind of flash. Is that part of why you're okay laying minus 15 and a half in this spot, even though you know that they need to go beyond just this game in the tournament? Yeah, this has been like a big topic of conversation. This whole basketball season is the NCAA uses this evaluation tool when they're making their bracket and it's called the net. And a lot of what the net is based off of is point differential. Right. And, there are some metrics, Haslam metrics uses this thing. Um, it stops taking in data basically when the game is statistically over. Right. The net does not do that. Okay. So beating a team by 50, even if you're favored by 40, still right. means a whole lot, even compared to beating a team by 10, if you were only favored by four. Yeah. So there is definitely an incentive for teams to lay it on, especially when, the, when they're on the bubble and the metrics are going to be so close and the resumes are going to be so tight that teams are going to be incentivized to continue pouring on the points, to continue seeing their, keeping their starters out there. And we've had coaches come out and say, this is just the world we live in now. Yeah. We have to kind of lay it on. And so that has made me all season a little more comfortable to lay these higher spreads that can definitely look a little scary, but knowing that they're going to have to continue putting on the points and up in the scoring differential makes me more comfortable to do that. And knowing that they are on the bubble and they have more incentive to go full throttle for the entire game, I think that does help too. So Aiden likes uh, New Mexico minus 15 and a half, minus 106, along with Utah minus five and a half at minus 120. That is Aiden Cotter. Make sure you check him out uh, on Twitter at Aiden Cotter FD. Find his work over at FanDuel Research and check him out again here next week on the show, breaking down the actual men's basketball tournament as well. Aiden, a pleasure to get you on the show here for today. Good luck to you with your bets today and enjoy the basketball. We'll talk to you again next week. Absolutely, Jim. Thanks for having me on.
Alrighty. I uh, appreciate you, Aiden, once again, and we'll talk to him again next week here on the show. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Covering the Spread to get those shows as they go live as we have a jam-packed week in store for next week. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. As mentioned, tomorrow, talking NFL free agency takeaways with Ryan Williams. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.